the next paper is on course hits, discrepancy, and sketches in machine learning, and the talk will be given by Igor Liberty. Hello, good morning. Uh, so this is work done by me and Zor Karni, who's a principal scientist at Amazon and a, uh, you know, a good friend. I'm going to jump right in. Uh, I'm going to give a lot of references in the end. We don't have time to actually dive into a, a large body of work on corsets and epsilon approximations for data. But the basic idea is to have, when, when we have a set of points, they could be either samples or just like arbitrary data points, we want to create a corset for them. And by corset, I mean uh, in the sense here that there is some function that I'm going to sum over uh, data points and some uh, set of model parameters or some query, and I want this to be similar on the original data and the corset. And so if I look at a Gauss, uh, like a, some kernel density, I can think about uh, summing up, uh, you know, some uh, my points with some diminishing weights around some point, uh, and I want the, that measure to be the same uh, approximately on both sides, no matter where I center that ball. And of course, <clears throat> you can think about a measure being like roughly half the space with maybe some smooth transi transition. And if this is correct for all, say, half spaces, then I can create a corset for, say, my positive and negative examples and do like some training on the corset instead of on the whole data. And a very natural question to ask is how small can those corsets be? Uh, and, uh, you know, what problems kind of uh, lend themselves to this uh, kind of uh, uh, treatment? So I'm going to start with something, uh, kind of an exercise to go through this, uh, 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 kind of to construct something together. And we're going to look at uh, a very simple space. It's just a, uh, numbers. So x1 to xn, and we're going to look at the uh, the function. It's just the sum of uh, these step functions. So this gives you the uh, uh, cumulative distribution of, of those points, right? So the, my my function is just the sum of step functions where the step is at xi, and I want to approximate this, and an approximate an epsilon approximation for this is any any function that you know wiggles through between those you know. Uh, two dotted lines, uh, epsilon n away from from the real function. And the way I'm going to try to do this first is I'm going to just skip every other step and take double size steps, which is obvious. And I'm going to keep doing that. I'm going to then like, you know, jump over like uh, bigger steps and make those double again. And if I do this uh, some number of times until I'm left with roughly one over epsilon steps, I'm left with an epsilon an approximation, which is an immediate exercise you can go through. But uh, uh, so the way I want to think about this is uh, actually I'm going to look at the original function that we had, just the sum of all those functions. Uh, and then my approximation was every other step but double the size. If I subtract the two, I look, I see that the error or the discrepancy between those two functions is just the sum of function, the original function multiplied by either one or minus one. <clears throat> uh, and so if I look at this discrepancy function, if I, uh, if I uh, kind of, follow, if I look at the signs that I get from my s steps uh, or my, uh, you know, jumping steps, uh, you know, quote unquote algorithm, then I see the description, the description, the d discrepancy function is inc uh, incredibly flat. And then I want to ask myself if I have, uh, so this, for this step function, I know the discrepancy is very small. Does that always lend itself to small uh, corset, uh, corsets? And the answer, of course, is yes. Otherwise, I wouldn't be standing here. Uh, so the fact that you can always create corsets of size, if you have the, the what we call the class discrepancy, which is this minimal, if, if, you, say, if you have a set of functions, a set of points, uh, if you have, uh, look at the minimal signing of those functions and try to get the flattest possible function, the magnitude of that function is the class discrepancy. Uh, you always get small corsets, and the construction also, also is also extremely simple. You basically keep pruning uh, the, the data in the same way that we just did now, but you also get streaming algorithms and, and uh, dis deterministic and randomized streaming algorithms that are almost as small. Now, uh, most of this work, or at least most of these ideas are not incredibly new. Uh, some of them were known in this way or another. I don't think they were 
put together in quite this way. But the question in, uh, that I want to ask myself is how to generalize this or how to compute the class discrepancy. Uh, in one dimension, thank you. In one dimension, uh, if we look at a, instead of a step function, we look at like a slightly smoother step function. You wouldn't be shocked that that, that doesn't break things, and you can still get the discrepancy being something like a constant over m, which is the same thing you got for this uh, step function a second ago. Neither does pretty much any kernel in one dimension. So any bump function, any bump-like function, would have this uh, same thing. But if you uh, but if you take this to higher dimensions, uh, then suddenly things uh, break. So if you look at this uh, trans like sigmoid activation regression, we didn't know how to bound its class discrepancy, and neither could we do it for Gaussian kernel until we start working on this problem. So a high dimensional uh, version of a bump is like some uh, kernel function. Here is the Gaussian kernel. And you'd think to yourself, I'd want to maybe think about so this, this expression, the class discrepancy, actually is incredibly similar to the Radamacher complexity. Instead, uh, the only difference is that instead of looking at the expectation of these like random signs, we look at the minimal possible assignments of random signs. And, uh, oh, yeah, okay. So this, there was an animation here, so I was supposed to. So I was, as a, you know, I was trying to say, are those similar, and then the nope would appear. They're not similar. Uh, and there's a, yeah, and there's a typo. It should be uh, R, capital R, uh, underscore M at the bottom. But the Radomacher complexity generally goes like something like one over square root M or square root N, depending on your uh, notation. And the class discrepancy usually goes like one over M, which gives you much smaller core sets than, some, than you could get by sampling. But also the math behind it kind of ends up being very different. So as an example, I want to kind of uh, state an obvious thing that everybody knows, that if I have a set of random, I have a set of unit vectors, if I sum them up with random signs, I will end up in a ball of radius roughly square root n. That's like the random walk distance, right? But if I uh, try, to, try to end the walk as, as close as possible to the origin, I can always find an assignment of signs that, that actually is contained in a radius square root d, which is potentially much smaller. Uh, doing this, of course, is much harder. That's you have to solve an LP to get those signs. Uh, but this becomes much harder in general. If you sum up matrices with arbitrary signs, and now the norm is not just a distance, but it's like the two norm, how do you, what's the, what's the best you can do? And apparently you can, do, you can get to distance square root D, uh, but that's hard to do. And uh, and the main technical lemma in our paper shows that uh, if you take any set of vectors, if you look at the sum of the vectors or the sum of the uh, covariance of those vectors or the sum of their outer products, uh, like as a three tensor, four tensor, and so on, you can simultaneously make sure that, you can find signs that simultaneously make sure that all of those are uh, small in, in two norm, which is a kind of a, a, to us, was a pretty surprising result. But the interesting thing is that that enough Kind of that was a, it seems like a, it seemed like a detour to talk about those sums of matrices and tensors. But in fact, that's all you need for any function uh, that is a function of the dot product in some Euclidean space. So that includes the Gaussian kernel and the sigma activation losses and all these things. Because you can just expand in the Taylor series, kind of linearize things that linearize the dot product, which becomes a tensor, and then things just fall out. So this is like, this is the entire transition. So basically everything was contained in the last result. And I'm, re this is that, uh, this is my one minute, my, my one minute. Uh, so what you get is basically for a, a bunch of problems, including logistic regression, act sigma activation regression, covariance estimation, graph Lassian uh, approximation, Gaussian and other kernel approximations and so on you get that all of them have corsets of uh, size square root d over epsilon uh, and have streaming and course streaming algorithms for creating those corsets. Uh, specifically for kernel density, we actually close a, an open problem that's been worked on for about 10 years now or maybe more. Um, and while I think this is a, you know, a, a, a incredibly, to me, surprising result, it's still, there's still a lot of work to be done 
Uh, first of all, the, we started with the step functions and the CDF. The high dimensional analog of that is a zero one classifier. We don't know what the class discrepancy is for that. Uh, neither do we know what the class discrepancy is for any kind of non smooth or non differentiable kernels. And so a lot of things, so I, you know, are those fundamentally different or does, are just our math breaks? We have no idea. And a, and a second, maybe more fundamental question is can we compute those things? So we know they exist now, but we don't have great algorithms to actually find those opt like, uh, asymptotically optimal uh, corsets for any of those problems. That's it. Uh, no, it's a, it's a kind of a strong condition. If you're going to do ERM on your corset, then you can you can oftentimes. Uh, yeah, you can cook up some uh, things like that. Yeah. Let's thank the speaker again.